Schedule Builders, the purpose of this video is to show you how to deal with screen setup. This video is primarily geared towards the middle school team uh, because middle schools will be using PowerSchool to collect course requests from students. Uh, high schools may want to do this again for straggler students after we finish using the new technology created enrollment site. Uh, but for screen setup, Again, when we're talking about collecting student course requests, we have to set the screens up for each grade level so that we can collect their requests the way we want to. Screen setup is tied to course groups. There's video on course groups. Course groups are how you tell in the screen setup if, if sixth graders, this is where you're going to change, this is where you're going to choose your math class. So you'd have a course group of all sixth grade math classes that are available that we can link under a, under the screen setup so we can drive kids to pick certain courses. So when we want to set up the screens for each grade level in our building, I'm going to click on screen setup and that takes me to where I can set up for future requests. You can see the different grades that are at the school and you have to set up each grade level one at a time. I'm going to click on grade six for now. The one thing I want you to notice, these carry over from year to year. That was not always true in the past with PowerSchool. Uh, but for a long, long time now, they carry over from year to year. So whatever you had set up last year carries over. A um, couple features of the screen, and it's going to be the same for all of these, depending on how you have them set up. There's a welcome message to display. It's already going to tell them they're in the request screen for 1920, but you can make them a little welcome message. So you want to update the welcome message to be 1920 or whatever the next year is. This is where you can turn whether or not students can actually do an enter request, you turn that on here. By default, they're turned off. You want to keep them off until you're ready to turn them on. Uh, but that's, that's good. Uh, number of credit hours each student must submit. At the middle level, courses aren't worth credit, so we don't really use these. Okay, uh, And then down here, you can see that you already have, again, if, this is where, if, if last year's process worked for you, it's already set up. Um, so you have, like at Liberty Middle, they have a sixth grade ELA option for students to choose from. It's a multi-course um, option for them to choose from. And the course group is middle school, sixth grade ELA, 18, 19. Again, in the course groups, if you set your course groups up in the future, just to say MS sixth grade ELA, leave out the year, then all you gotta do is update the course group and this will update. Since this says 1819, we're going to have to come in here, click on the 6th grade ELA, and change the list of valid courses to middle school 6th grade ELA 1920. We would have not had to do that if we would have just made that title MS 6th grade ELA and leave it. And don't touch it, but I'm going to update this one because it has to be updated. Or it's going to have to be updated now or someone's going to have to go back and change the names back. So... That's, you know, this stuff carries over. If it's good for you, if it worked last year, it should be fine. Um, you can edit these. So again, to edit it, sixth grade math, I can click on it. I might have to update this to be what it's going to be. I'm going to leave it for now. You can give them a description here. Number of courses you must select. They have to select one. The minimum they can select is one. The max they can select is one. So it's going to stop them at selecting one. This is going to generate a required course. Now that gets into, is the course request a required course, an elective course, or an alternate course? Any required course cannot be replaced by an alternate. Any elective course can be replaced by an alternate when you collect these. Uh, number of requests to generate is always one. Always one. It's always one. If you change that to a 10, and they select a class, it's going to give them 10 math requests, and it's going to be a situation. It's always one. And then the sort order is when we look back here, what's the order that you're going to see these in? One, two, three. And you can change that sort order over here as well. Then you have an opportunity to put in, you know, Liberty Middle does sixth grade year-long electives. And if we look at that, they let them choose between zero and two of them. Then they have sixth grade semester electives. They let them choose between zero and four of them. And then we have the alternates. 
Now, it's tricky. You want to make sure kids don't oversubscribe. So there are reports that can be run to make sure you don't have students selecting two year long classes and four semester long uh, electives as well, because it's too many classes and then they can fit in their schedule. But that is essentially um, with them carrying over if you're just going to edit things. If you want to make a new requirement, right? So this is ELA math. Let's say, and I don't think we have advanced social studies, but let's say we had advanced social studies. So we wanted them to choose. We could do a new single course requirement, right? And we could put this information in. We could do a new core requirement. So this requirement name is going to be social studies, right? The description is going to be this is required. And then list of valid courses, we're going to come down here and we might put in, I don't think you have it, but you could put in social studies, eighth grade, and hit submit, and it's going to force them to take that class. Um, that's a general rundown on screen setups. Um, since they carry over, I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time on it. I'm already at six minutes. So we're going to try and wrap this up. The one thing I will say is this is where you turn them on or off. You check the boxes and hit submit. Historically, it looks like you can turn it on for the admin portal and leave it off for students and parents. Historically, that has not worked. And if it's been on for one, it's been on for both. And we haven't really checked that in a while. Uh, but that is a random, not so great tutorial on screen setup. Uh, but since they carry over from year to year, we can help you out with, uh, with getting things changed if needed.